just treat it like a, a block, a circle with a V inside it, it might measure 0 to 20 volts. Uh, a 10 volt meter would be no good because if our battery is around 12 volts it will ping over to the right hand end and we won't be able to measure anything meaningful off it. Now the ideal voltmeter shouldn't take any current off the circuit at all to operate. We know it does a little bit because it has to have some current flowing through that coil to generate a magnetic field. But in the ideal world we want a voltmeter to have a high resistance. The reason being we don't want it to load the circuit down. Now it doesn't actually make it matter a jot. We can use the crudest meters that have reasonably high currents flowing. I mean high, I mean it's not that high but relatively speaking you know, a few hundred microamps, even a milliamp or two, it won't make any difference when we're measuring off the system here because the, the, the car battery here can supply a huge current. We're dealing with very low heavy copper conductors here supplying our radio so it doesn't cause any, any trouble at all. It won't load the circuit down and artificially reduce the voltage that we're trying to measure. But suffice to say the ideal voltage has a higher resistance. It becomes important when we're working inside a piece of circuitry and we're wanting measuring voltages around the circuit. And this might be a, um, just a resistor. But there might be another resistor in series with it, like a potential divider arrangement, you know, the bias of a trans bias supply of a transistor, that could be the base of a transistor connected to there. If this is a very high resistance, maybe several thousand ohms or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of ohms, say 100k, that could be 200k, we'd expect to see what about two thirds of the voltage, uh, two thirds of 12 volts at this point here, just because of the ratio of the resistors, if you remember back to Ohm's law. But there is a problem, if we have a fairly crude meter here, that um, might have a resistance of only a few thousand ohms, you can see the problem that you, you now got effectively, well that 200 is much higher than a few thousand ohms, so you've got a 100k resistor and then you've got the resistance of the meter, a few thousands, and it's going to actually drop the voltage way down. The meter will cause a lot more current to flow on that circuit. You'll have a lot more V equals I times R drop across here, so you'll artificially load the circuit down, and that's, that is very important. Um, as I said, for, the, for a lot of the voltages we measure in the real world in amateur radio is mainly measuring, I think the most common thing we do is measure supply voltages to radios and things like that. And that's not a problem, it doesn't matter if we use an old mechanical meter for that. And they have their place, they're easy to read, you can see them from a distance and all, you know, and, uh, and it's easy to see them changing or moving and things like that rather than trying to track numbers. But once you start working around in electronic circuitry, I'll get rid of that. Uh, those older mechanical meters don't have a place because they consume so much, they draw so much current off the circuit, they load things down and instead of measuring say two thirds of 12 volts in that setting there, you might only measure a few tenths of a volt, it would just totally muck, muck things up. That's where these things are ideal, your modern electronic voltmeter. Um, this one will do current, resistance, voltage, all sorts of different things, even measure capacitance which is quite handy. But these things have a very high resistance across these terminals and they'll often be many, many millions of ohms. So these will give you much more accurate results in a circuitry where the supply, where the voltage you're measuring is coming through a high value of resistance from the supply. As I said, it doesn't matter a jot if you're just measuring a car battery or a dry cell battery voltage. Very important if you're working on electronics to use meter, modern meters like this, electronic ones which have got a very high input resistance. It doesn't load the circuit down. They'll, um, typically use uh, metal oxide um, semiconductor MOSFETs, uh, metal oxide semiconductor field effect or just straight field effect transistors which have very high input resistances and they use them in the input stages of the meter. Um, important point. Right, voltage. Okay, um, measuring current. Volts, meter, measuring voltage before was in volts, current we're going to measure in amps which is the number of electrons per second um, flowing past a point. Now if we look at our arrangement before, uh, we had a voltmeter connected across the supply to measure the pressure if you like, the supply voltage. This time we want to measure the current. How much current does our radio draw off our battery? And that could be useful to know. Um, We'll try and work out um, what size supply we might need or um, um, 
what size conductors we might need, the heavier the current, the, uh, the higher the current consumed, the heavier conductors we need. And um, so current is the flow through a circuit. It's a number of electrons per second, if you like. And um, in order to be able to measure that, we actually have to break the circuit because we have to know how much is, is, is flying through the system. And the only way to do that, well, there are other ways we'll talk about quickly in a minute, but um, the main way is to interrupt the circuit and actually put, you know, an A in the middle, that's an ammeter, put the ammeter in the circuit so it measures the current flowing through the circuit. So all the electrons that are flowing through the radiator have to go through the meter as well and they can count them. It doesn't count them physically, but effectively what it does, does is it displays them in, in, in amps, which is the same thing if you like. Now, so therefore we, we can probably just start talking about the ideal characteristics of an ammeter. We don't want it to have much resistance at all. If we put an ammeter in there that had a high, high resistance of several thousand ohms, um, no, the radio would not operate. There would not be enough current flowing through the radio. The, um, the, 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 the resistance of the meter will stop or reduce the current flow to a point that most of the voltage in the circuit has been dropped across here and very little across the radio. We want it the other way around. We want the ammeter to have such a low internal resistance between its terminals that effectively there's a fairly insignificant drop of voltage across it. Remember V equals I times R. Remember the same I is going through the radio, it's going through the current. We want, uh, through the meter, we want this resistance of the meter to be very low so when the current's flowing there's very little voltage drop across it. So there you are, there's the ideal characteristic of the ammeter. And how do we do it? Well, we showed before that the typical meter movement and it's the same meter movement we use for voltage or current as a fine wire wrapped around a arrangement attached to a meter pivot, a, me uh, a needle and pivoted and so on with a, a spring to return it back. That's what we use for current. But remember we said it's quite a high value of resistance and it only needs a few uh, tens or hundreds of microamps to make it deflect. Well that's not going to work, it's got high resistance and um, it won't work in the circuit for the reasons we just said. So what we do is we do the opposite of what we do with a voltmeter. A voltmeter we put the resistance in series with it, but with a, an ammeter we want most of the current to actually bypass the meter. Um, remember at full scale it might only need for a typical meter 50 or 100 microamps to deflect it all the way over. So let's say for a typical high frequency single sideband radio, uh, uh, probably a, meet, a realistic meter to measure how much current will have a full scale deflection of 20 amps because on voice peaks it will be hitting 20, could even go slightly over. And um, but it only, only needs 100, amps to 100 microamps to fully deflect the meter. So what we do is we put a resistor across the meter terminals and that's called a shunt because it's like a shunting yard in a railway yard shunting, yeah, you know, you know what I mean, so that most of the current actually bypasses the meter. Some of it will flow through the meter to make it deflect, but um, so the meter will still operate, but we, de we design it so most of it's going through the shunt. And we'll choose a value of resistance, so say it takes 0.2 of a volt, say the resistance of the meter is such that it takes about 0.2 of a volt and 100 microamps to deflect it. We would design this shunt so that when 20 amps minus 100 microamps is flowing through there, it would have about a 0.2 of a volt across it drop. Does that make sense? We, we, if we, at, at the peak deflection we want the current flowing through that resistance to, def, to produce a voltage drop across it of 0.2 volts. So the meter measures that 0.2 volts and, and displays it, but you calibrate it in amps. So that's how you can work out shunt resistances, but we don't have to know that for this. Just suffice to say that, just, just simplifying things back again, that an ammeter has built into it a resistor. Sometimes you'll see the resistor on the outside of them, the shunt directly across them. And um, it'll be just, sometimes it'll be almost just a thick copper strap if it's a very high current meter, if you're measuring 50, 100 amps or something like that. It'll just be a, a, a thick um, strap of copper across the back because it doesn't, uh, those currents, you don't need much resistance to drop, to produce enough voltage drop across it that the meter will measure. So that's a, an ammeter. Most of the current bypasses the meter and um, 
some of it goes through the meter to measure it to make the works go to keep the, its resistance low so you don't get very much voltage drop across it and that's how they work. Um, the electronic ones do exactly the same, they have a shunt inside them but the meter measures a, a, the voltage across the shunt electronically and displays it. So the ideal current meter and meter has a very low resistance to, to, uh, to current flow so it won't upset the works. The same way in the voltmeter before we wanted to have a very high resistance so it doesn't alter the conditions in the circuit. The same with the ammeter. If you use a fairly uh, ammeter with a fairly high resistance it will actually tend to make the current flow through the circuit look lower than it would be in reality because um, you're adding more resistance into the circuit. So remember how I showed you how I wired up before. You have to break the circuit, put the meter in and measure it. And one thing you never do is you don't put an ammeter directly across the circuit because what will happen is because it's a very low value of resistance in there if just a fraction of an ohm you'll end up with an extreme current flowing through to the point that you can actually you, you ping the meter because <laughs> the meter will reflect over and you can burn the shunt out and you get so much current flowing through that shunt because you're effectively short setting the battery and a car battery you have to be wary of can deliver hundreds or even thousands of amps into a short circuit if it's a big one and that will smoke your meter up and then it's toast. So that's just an important point about wiring up air meters. There are um, current meters you can get, they're becoming quite common and they've come down in price, called clamp meters and they're quite clever. They're, I haven't got one to show you unfortunately but you'll, you'll see them in the, in the catalogues and what they are is a device with a meter on them and an adjust uh, switch for switching it on and selecting the current range and they have on top kind of like a padlock arrangement and they'll have a big button on the side. You, you push that in and it physically opens this loop and then you put the loop around the wire. So here's the conductor and then you'll close the, the, the loop you know, around the wire. So you can actually clamp, so it's called a clamp meter, you actually open it up, put it around the conductor, close it up again and what it does is it um, measures the magnetic field because of course when you've got a current flowing through that conductor you'll get a magnetic field produced around it and inside that, it's generally insulated, they've got a plastic coating but inside there there'll be some, there's uh, often ferrite or laminated iron or some sort of arrangement for carrying a magnetic field inside and inside the, um, the meter they have a device for sensing magnetic field and then that displays um, on the so the greater the magnetic field intensity the higher the current and it will display it in amps. Very useful and electricians use them a lot for working on switchboards and things because it's quite impractical to, to and even in DC work it can be quite a pain to actually disconnect the battery and put the meter leads in there and so on um, whereas if you just put that around the conductor you can measure the current draw and they're very very practical but I'm surprised I haven't got around to buying one myself actually. <laughs> Must get one. That's the clamp meter useful device. Um, just one last thing about air meters, they have a, like volt voltmeters, they have to be wired up the correct way around. There's a plus and minus symbol on them and the, with an air meter you connect the plus to the plus of the supply. So although the radio's got a positive lead there that's red, that has to go to the negative lead because it's, it's the positive, positive side of the air meter that has to go to the positive side of the supply. And uh, multimeters will let you measure down to, to microamps or up as high as tens of amps. And um, those, some of those clamp meters can, because they don't have a shunt, they're quite, uh, they're not restricted by having to have a big heavy shunt in them. You can measure up to many, many hundreds of amps for those, for industrial ones, for measuring, you know, supply to a switchboard and they'll measure, measure um, alternating current and direct current. The meters we've been telling. I'll just make a quick comment about um, alternating current measurement. When you have a, a volt, when you were, need to measure um, alternating um, AC voltage, so if, if you want to have a, a meter measuring, say that you can connect to a uh, the 230 volt supply, or maybe the output of a generator using it field day to make sure it is producing 230 volts, 110 if you're in the US. Um, the meters we've been showing you won't work. Those deflection systems are designed 
to um, be wired up a certain way around. If the current flows back the other way, the needle will try and go backwards. So for one half of the cycle it's trying to go the correct way, one half it's trying to go backwards and it will just sit around zero for AC because it, just, it will just slightly vibrate at 50 times a second, which isn't much use. So what we do is if we want to measure, uh, if we have a voltmeter with, with its internal series resistors and so on, typically what we'll do uh, and what's often done in, um, in, in in multimeters is that there will be a bridge rectifier arrangement put around it. You remember those from um, from um, power supplies. So here we have the diodes there. Uh, let's set one there. Yep, yep, let's make sure we got these around the right way. Yep. That's goes off to the circuit you want to measure. So that's the AC connection of a bridge. There's a plus connection, minus connection with the diode, effectively switching the, the meter terminals to the correct supply, to the correct side each half of the cycle, and it will measure um, um, alternating current uh, voltage. Just one point about that, if you remember back to um, alternating current, there was a thing called peak voltage and um, RMS, where it means square, and our meters are calibrated in RMS generally because that's the heat equivalent DC heating effect and that's what uh, all AC supplies are, um, are rated at. So the supply from a New Zealand power outlet is 230 volts um, RMS. Because remember the peak is 1.414 times the RMS level. So uh, just to keep the math simpler, and this is what the exam question uses, if you've got a AC supply that reaches 14 volts peak, we want our meter to read 10 volts. That's roughly, that's relation, you know, roughly 1.414 is the relationship between the two. So that's, um, and that's how it's calibrated to, uh, to measure in that, in that, in that fashion. Um, they will only apply for a, for a sine wave. If the uh, waveform you're measuring in your circuit is some other funny thing, a square wave or triangular shaped wave or a distorted um, sine wave, um, it will no longer be reading the, the true RMS level. It's just, it's just something to keep in the back of your head, but for most intents and purposes when we're checking the output of a generator or, or a three pin socket or a transformer secondary in a, in a, in a in AC before the rectifier, say you've got a transformer you want to use in a power supply and you want to check the secondary voltage. Um, and you put your um, meter across it, that's displaying RMS because, and it's a sine wave uh, that's supplied from the national grid, so it's fine, there's no problems. Um, ohms, current resistance, or ohm meter. I hope I've spelt that right. <laughs> this, basically, this is a, a, a useful, um, one of the probably more useful things we do with meters is we want to measure the resistance. Uh, of a device, say a resistor, we, we want to check that, make sure we've got the, the resistor color code right so we can measure it before we solder it into a circuit. Or um, probably the most common reason we, we measure resistance is we want to make sure there is a connection between two points, that the, the, uh, the outer connection of a coaxial connector of a coaxial cable we've just made actually is connecting from one end to the other and that the inner is connecting from one end to the other and you can use a meter at each end to check. Um, so we'll just talk about how these things work. Typically we have, so here we have, we've got a typical circuit of a, um, whoops, I'm wrapped up here, sorry guys, fellas and fellesses. Um, we've got a resistor we want to measure, ah, question mark, I'll just shut the door here, an unknown value of resistance. And this is a circuit of a typical ohmmeter, we've got a device for measuring current, We've got a battery to supply uh, a voltage to make a current flow in the circuit and um, some sort of resistor just to calibrate the thing. So how, how it works is that, and this thing here is typically adjustable. In the older style multimeters that had, um, uh, you know, the, with, the, with the analog meter mechanical scale, is you have an adjustable thing here to zero the thing. So how it works is that you short out the terminals first, the test leads, and that will make a current flow in the circuit. 
So effectively the resistance of the unknown is now, is now zero ohms. We've got a short circuit, our test leads are connected together. And what will happen is the meter will move over and you adjust it so this end here is infinity ohms, that's a symbol for infinity, and this end is zero ohms. Because when the zero ohm, no resistance, current will, will flow, well practically no resistance, there will be some resistance in the leads, current, current will um, flow in the circuit and that's our zero point, we've got the leads touched together. So what we do is we adjust, touch the leads together and adjust the resistance until the needle sits on the zero mark. Okay, that's fine, and then you disconnect, you remove the leads from touching each other and the needle will go back. There's now you've got air between the terminals, all intents and purposes, it's infinity, and it's marked off, at, it just sits back at zero, which is called infinity. So when you put some other resistance in between, say 100 ohms, the, the system is designed and the, the scale is marked so that now it will sit, say, on the 100 ohm mark. Now the meter reads backwards because at zero ohms, current, maximum current flows, you've got maximum deflection. So these mechanical meters always read backwards from the right hand end. So that, that might be 100, this could be uh, 200, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000. Now one thing about these older meters, that type, because just mathematically you'd switch off if you're not interested, but because um, I is equal to V over R, the voltage is constant, the resistance is in the bottom line, it's kind of a reciprocal arrangement, so you end up, you don't end up with a nice linear meter, you don't end up with 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, it bunches up. You get 100, 200, 1000, and then like 2000, then 10,000 and so on. Again, it gets quite bunched up at the higher end. So generally what they'll do to get around that is they'll have switched resistances. They can, you'll have another resistor in here, a, a bank of resistors that are selected. By, by a switch and you zero it appropriately and um, so if you want to measure 10,000 ohms then uh, you'll be in a different range and it will be, it'll be easy to use so it might be 10,000 here instead of weight crammed up at the other end. The electronic meters do all that for you, they zero automatically, the whole thing's done and it's displayed in a nice fashion, it's easy to read so I think the, the, the one thing that's really great with the, the newer meters is, especially for resistance, they're so much easier to use. They tend to auto-select the range that you need and they'll auto-zero and things like that. to display it in a direct number that's easy to read rather than trying to look at a scale. So that's quite a, a nice feature. So that's an ohm meter. It has to have an internal battery supply to push the current around the circuit. And you find with the older analog meters, which still have a use, uh, but as I said, they're not, you know, they're becoming superseded. Um, if the battery inside is getting a bit flat when you try and zero it, you can't get it all the way over. So it can be, um, they're not really so useful. Now, as I said before, in the real world, often we want to measure continuity. And by that, I mean there is a connection from one end to the other. So we might have um, a coaxial cable. And it has a connector on the end, which I showed you on the transmission lines. So there's the braid, so there's the inner. I won't draw the connectors, I'm not an artist. And um, we know that the inner is going to be go all the way through. So when we've got our... Whoops. Take that adapter on there. Here's our coaxial cable. If we've just wired it up, we want to know, make sure the thing's going from one end to the other. So we can use a meter, so we can put probe on that end, probe on that end, we should get close to zero ohms from the inner to the inner, and the outer to the outer. We want to make sure the braid, the outer connection is zero ohm. And the other useful thing to do is to put the ohm meter across here, and it should be infinite. Because if in the process, especially these older <laughs> uh, UHF-259 connectors, they're pretty crude the way they're soldered, and you can get a solder bridge inside. So if you've got a solder blob there, you'd get zero ohms, which you don't want. You'd want infinity ohms going from the outside to the inside, and if you measure a very low resistance, you know you've got a problem. And the nice thing about the, um, the newer um, meters is that they can give you a beep. They can set them on a range that will beep when there's a very low resistance from one end to the other, called a continuity test. And I'll do a, a practical uh, demonstration on that in a minute. So that's, that's testing for continuity, a good useful use of a uh, resistance meter, an ohm meter. Plus the, 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 the new 
I'm just going to run through a um, demonstration of doing some measurements. I've got here my old trusty power supply, a digital meter. You might be able to read the, um, the screen there. Just reading 0.001, uh, it's not connected to anything. Here's a digital meter. Here's it, its leads, power supply, and I've got a light bulb here just running off the 5 volt part of the um, supply. Now, pardon me. If you just look at, I'll just turn that off, just it might help the camera crank its light levels up a bit. This digital meter will uh, sometimes called a VOM, volt ohm milliammeter, or a multimeter as a common term, will do a variety of measurements. When it's selected to V, okay, uh, the leads between the test leads will measure applied voltage. There'll be a certain maximum voltage that you're allowed to apply to it. I think it's up to a thousand volts, 750 volts AC. It's written on the front, a thousand volts DC. Don't exceed that <coughs> for a variety of reasons. Pardon me. You might damage the instrument, or the leads might actually have insulation that's good enough. It could flash over and give you a zap. One thing to be wary of with these ones. Uh, you generally find the more you spend on a meter, the less selections you have to make to, to measure what you want to, and the less connectors there seem to be, because they switch the connectors as well. But the black negative lead always goes to common, COM, okay, and the red one you put into the appropriate plug depending upon what you're doing. And if you're measuring volts or ohms, it's labelled here, you might not be able to see on the camera on this side. So we're going to measure voltage. So we'll just turn the supply on. We want to measure the voltage uh, being supplied to this light bulb. And we can just put our leads across here. Here we go, the meter's just auto ranging. 5.03, close enough to 5 volts. That's what, in fact, that's what the supply says on the front. We can just check at the actual supply itself here. 5.07, a little bit higher. It's just a few tenths of a volt, few uh, no, a few one hundredths of a volt higher actually, and the reason for that is a very little difference, only about 30 millivolts, but it's due to the um, the voltage drop in the leads. The leads have got a little bit of resistance. It's not, it, it's copper wire. It's not that thick. The, this bulb's not probably using a lot of current, but it doesn't matter what, how low the resistance is and how low the current. V equals I times R. You'll always get a little bit of voltage drop across the conductor. So that's what we're actually seeing. Just out of interest while we do the demo, you see here we are, there's the supply available, 5.07, the voltage at the bulb, 5.02, so it's 50 millivolts volt drop, not enough to be of any real consequence most of the time. It's an interesting observation though that you can sometimes get a bit of a shock when you actually, uh, not electric shock, <laughs> If you don't have heavy enough supply leads to your, perhaps your transceiver, on transmit you can get quite a lot of voltage drop. If you measure the voltage drop, uh, the voltage across the supply terminals to your transceiver with the key down and generating a lot of radio frequency power, so in other words it's drawing a lot of current off the of supply, then you check it back at the supply end, you could be in a bit of a shock if your leads are too small, you could be losing a volt or two in the leads, which will dro drop the amount of power your transmitter will produce because it is designed for rated power at a certain rated voltage, so that's why you see transceivers with very heavy cables uh, going to them. Right, what if we want to measure the, so that's measuring voltage, we can check the voltage at the other terminals on this power supply, on the lower and down ones, we'll just go across those two now, be careful not to obscure the, the meter. The display blanks for a while, well it just quickly does its, there you go, 12.2 to 5 volts. Now if we go across these outer two it should be about 10 because it's 0 plus 5 minus 5. Sure enough 10.08. Now if you get the leads around the wrong way, so if you put the minus to the plus and the plus to the minus, it still reads minus 5.09, slightly different result this time but close enough, but see it's a minus sign in front. That's the beauty of electronic instruments, you don't always have to worry which way around you connect them, they'll just tell you a minus sign if you've got the leads around the wrong way. Whereas with analogue instruments, with meters, you put them around the wrong way, the needle will go back the, uh, the wrong direction and hit the end stop. Okay, that's measuring voltage. Let's measure, um, what if we want to measure the current being uh, drawn by this light bulb? So I'll just turn everything off. I'll just 
Now, the observant people amongst you will notice that the... Oh, hang on, I've dropped the microphone on the floor. Here we go. Observant folks will notice <laughs> that the meter has changed. That's because, one thing I forgot to tell you about um, digital ammeters is that they generally have a fuse in the amp in the, uh, in the ammeter part of the circuit just in case you apply the circuit accidentally the meter to a circuit where too much current will flow through it and damage the meter shunt um, and da do damage they will often have a fuse in series where it will blow and protect the meter and the fuse in fact has blown and <laughs> does not work on the amps range so now I've gone back to this old trusty old meter the AVO8 which for measuring current does a fine job and uh, we'll use it now so what we've got here Here's our power supply leads coming from our, our power supply here, plus and minus. Now we want, to, rather than going straight on to the uh, bulb, we need to put the meter in series, remember, so all the current has to go through the metering arrangement and back to the bulb. So here's the positive lead from the supply going to the red positive lead of the meter. Here's the black lead coming back, which we now apply. The light go, goes on. Notice I'm holding up my fingers. You can do that safely with low voltage DC systems. Not a thing to do if you're working on valve equipment or mains powered equipment. You'll, you'll pay the price. Um, we'll talk about that on safety later. So you see the bulb's lit up and the meter has deflected a tiny amount. Now the next thing about using an analog meter, so it's we'll time to talk about that. On here you have to select the range on this particular instrument. You select the, the AC and uh, ohms range. So we put that switch to DC. We're doing a DC measurement. On this side, we select current down this side, voltage down the other. We want to measure 